Okay, everybody. Well, thank you for joining us today for the ZooShare info session. We're going to get started now. Um, so my name is Daniel Bita, and I am the executive director of ZooShare. And we are building North America's first zoo biogas plant across the street from the Toronto Zoo. And uh, we are very much looking forward to getting that started next year. Um, with me in this picture here is Nastari. She is our tallest fuel supplier from the zoo. And uh, that's a picture that we took last year when we did our bond launch, uh, the public bond launch at the zoo in October. So right now, uh, some studies have shown that 40% of the food that is produced in Canada gets wasted. And much of this is still ending up in landfills. When organic waste ends up in a landfill, what happens is it breaks down the same way that it's going to break down in our biogas plant, except it has a much greater uh, negative consequence on the environment, specifically the methane emissions from the organic waste end up in the atmosphere. Methane is a powerful greenhouse gas that is 25 times more powerful than carbon dioxide in terms of greenhouse gas, uh, sorry, global warming potential. Um, and so for us, this is a very big problem and it's the one that we wanted to focus specifically on tackling. And the way that we're doing that is by diverting organic waste away from landfills and towards our anaerobic digester or biogas plant. And by doing this, we can then capture and use the methane to generate renewable energy, as well as saving the valuable nutrients that are in the food waste so that they could be reused to grow more food. When the same organic waste ends up in a landfill and it's mixed together with plastics and heavy metals and other kinds of waste streams, it gets toxified and is lost forever, which means that as far as our food production process goes, we have an increasing reliance on um, commercially produced fertilizers, which come uh, from mining potash and using natural gas. Um, it's a very chemically uh, intensive process as well as energy intensive process. Um, but we have some excellent nutrients right here, which are going to waste and we want to help keep those nutrients in the food production cycle. So just to take one step backwards, what exactly is biogas and how is it produced? So at our plant that we are developing at the zoo, we will be taking zoo manure and grocery store waste. But really, you could take almost any organic waste stream, including human waste, uh, food waste from all kinds of food processing and production, um, crop waste from farm fields, uh, any organic waste stream can be put into a biogas plant. Uh, or in scientific terms or technical terms, this is called an anaerobic digester, which essentially means the process of digestion occurs without oxygen. A compost facility in comparison is called an aerobic digestion facility and that is because the waste streams are regularly turned over and oxygen gets to interact with the waste streams. In our case, the way that the anaerobic digester works is very much the same as our stomachs or a cow stomach. It is essentially a big concrete stomach that we're building. It's heated to the same temperature as our bodies, 38 degrees Celsius. It's mixed around constantly. And after a period of about 60 days, the organic waste is transformed into biogas, which is primarily methane, and fertilizer, which can be sold to farmers or to gardeners around the city, which is exactly what we are planning on doing once our facility is up and running. In our case, the other thing that we're doing is burning the biogas in a generator in order to create electricity for the Ontario grid. But this gas could also be used uh, for heating purposes, uh, it can be injected into the natural gas pipeline, so it's going to be used for cooking or heating or however else we use natural gas in our society. And it could also be used as vehicle fuel for natural gas vehicles. Biogas technology is essentially a way of recycling organic waste into higher value products, in this case specifically electricity and fertilizer. Um, as I was explaining, the waste doesn't go to waste. It is diverted away from landfills into an anaerobic digester where we can productively make use of this valuable resource. And while doing that activity, 
we actually reduce greenhouse gas emissions, which is primarily from the diversion of that waste away from the landfill and towards more productive uses, in this case, biogas production. And we're able to produce power 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, the reason for this is as long as the organic waste keeps arriving, the biogas will be continuously produced and stored in the roof of the digester. So it's that dome structure. It's actually an inflatable roof. And so that's where the gas is stored before being consumed by the generator to create the electricity. This technology is not new. It has been in use for over 200 years around the world. Currently, there are over 10,000 commercial biogas plants installed in Germany alone. And this map that you're looking at on the screen is what's currently happening in Ontario. We have 36 operational biogas plants across Ontario, and almost all of those are located on dairy farms where the farmers are co-digesting dairy manure with food waste that's being produced in those local areas. So very similar design to the plant that we are building at the zoo. This is what our biogas plant will look like approximately once it's up and running. Um, we are going to be beginning construction next year in June or July. We are waiting for the Ministry of the Environment to issue our permit so that we can go ahead with that. Um, but just to tell you a little bit more about some of the features of this biogas plant, uh, number one uh, in the foreground, that building there is where our engines will be stored, uh, where the actual electricity production will be occurring, and it is also where our classroom will be. So part of our design includes a classroom because we're very excited to be not only developing a biogas plant, but introducing an opportunity at a very high profile location educate the over 1 million people a year who visit the Toronto Zoo as to what biogas is and how valuable organic waste is as a resource and that it's not a waste at all. Uh, this classroom will have live operating statistics uh, about how much waste we are digesting, how much uh, emissions we're reducing, how much uh, power we're producing, and how much fertilizer we're making as a result of the process. Um, the green building with a white dome is the biogas plant, the anaerobic digester itself. Um, so after the waste is put into the input tanks, which are in between the engine room and the, bio, the anaerobic digester, uh, it is mixed together and put into that digestion tank for, as I said, a period of about 60 days. Once the waste has been fully digested, the gas goes to the engine room where it goes to make electricity. And the fertilizer that comes out the other end is going to go into uh, where the number three is there, that big liquid storage vessel. From there, we're going to separate out the solids, and those will be put in bags and sold in garden centers each spring. And the liquid component of the fertilizer will be sold to a farmer nearby the zoo uh, twice a year. We're going to empty that tank and spray it onto his field which is going to reduce the farm's need for commercially produced fertilizers while also helping us dispose of a very high value nutrient product. The project site is located at the current compost facility of the zoo, which is across the street from the main zoo site. What this means is that the zoo will not have to change its behavior at all. It will continue collecting the manure as it always has and dropping it off in the same place that it always has. The site right now currently has um, rows of manure piled up. And so if you look really closely at the image where the yellow arrow is pointing, you can make out those rows. And um, so we're just going to be moving that aside, building on the same site and going forward, the manure will be dropped off into a receptacle and used for biogas production. The other really convenient and uh, advantageous part about our location is that it's approximately 20 minutes away from all of the other suppliers of food waste, which is specifically grocery stores from one particular chain, Canada's largest grocery retailer. So being on the east end of the city, just five minutes from the 401, up a major street like Meadowvale Road, right next to the road itself, very easy access, this is a very convenient location for the grocery stores to be bringing their waste. At the current time, those same stores would be sending this organic waste potentially up to four hours one way 
away from where the stores are in order to dispose of them at either a compost facility, another biogas plant, or even a landfill in some cases. And so by dropping it off with us, they actually save significant amounts of money on transportation costs, in addition to identifying with a not-for-profit co-op like ZooShare, who works together with the Toronto Zoo. So there's a very strong social message that our grocery partner gets to um, take advantage of by working with us and supplying us with the fuel that we need to generate electricity. At our site, we will be generating approximately 4.1 million kilowatt hours per year of electricity, which is roughly the equivalent of 250 Ontario homes worth of power. We calculated that 250 based on the current Ontario average consumption of a four person home. If you are one of those people like myself who cares deeply about your energy bill and your energy consumption, you likely consume less than the average. And if many more people were like you, we could be providing more than 250 homes worth of power, but it'll still be the same 4.1 million kilowatt hours each year. By doing this, we'll be diverting 14,000 tons of organic waste away from landfills and compost facilities and towards our biogas facility at the Toronto Zoo. This 14,000 tons will be combined with 3,000 tons of zoo manure each year, and that's what we're going to be using to create the biogas and electricity. And by doing this, we are going to be reducing greenhouse gas emissions each year by over 10,000 tons, which is approximately the equivalent of taking 2,100 cars off the road each year. In order to make this happen, this is who is on our board and management team. So myself, I'm the executive director, I am a chartered financial analyst, and I previously was employed as an energy analyst focusing on credit and sustainability of some of the largest global utilities. After doing that job for six years, I got uh, kind of restless and tired of writing reports all day and not having a direct impact on the world in any way. And that eventually did lead me to found and start ZooShare four years ago. Helping me with this uh, from a guidance perspective uh, on our board as elected by the members of ZooShare, we have a seven member board filled with various levels of skills, experience, and expertise. Specifically, we have two professional engineers with experience in biogas and an environmental focus in their work. We have an MBA with experience um, founding and running a social venture. We have another person who is a biotech scientist who founded a fellow company in the biogas sector, as well as a commercial lawyer with experience in feed and tariff projects and a government relations expert. In addition to this, the Toronto Zoo holds a permanent seat on the Zoo, on the zoo Share Board, and uh, the individual who is currently representing the CEO, his name is Paul Whittem, and he's the manager of financial services at the zoo. Since launching the cooperative in 2011, we have raised over a million dollars in grants and seed capital to fund our current operations and the development activities. We have secured our lease with the Toronto Zoo, which is a 20-year lease with two five-year extension periods. And we have secured our feed and tariff contract with the Ontario Power Authority, which is a 20-year power purchase agreement. And we have secured a feedstock supply contract with Canada's largest grocery retailer, to provide us the 14,000 tons of organic waste we need in order to generate the electricity. In addition to this, we are very pleased to have Bullfrog Power as an education sponsor and founding investor of ZooShare. And since beginning bond sales last year in October, we have raised over $1.4 million through the sale of bonds to individuals and foundations, which is helping us get closer to our ultimate goal of raising $2.2 million. This picture that you're seeing on the screen right now is from a party we held this past October. We invited our 170 members who helped us get to that $1 million goal, which we crossed in September of this year. And we all had a great time celebrating this achievement and we are all very excited to keep going and get towards that $2.2 million target. In order to uh, build the facility, we need to raise not only the $2.2 million from bonds, but we also need to get construction and long-term debt financing. The total 
construction cost of our facility is $4.8 million. And the bulk of that is made up by the biogas plant itself and all of the components that you saw in the image I showed you a few slides before. So all of those tanks, the generating equipment, uh, the digestion equipment, and the pumps and mixers that make it all happen, as well as the engineering services that uh, we need to hire in order to procure the necessary equipment and oversee the construction and integrate all of the components. We are having a fixed price turnkey contract uh, with our engineering partner, Angus Power, and that's why 90% um, of the pie is made up of turnkey system price. In addition to this, we also need to purchase some grid connection equipment um, and uh, improve the road a little bit. That uh, goes from Zoo Road in, into the facility itself. It's just a couple hundred meters, and that's going to be a gravel road. In order to support the cost of the facility and pay down our bonds, as well as the long-term debt we're going to borrow, we are relying on three primary sources of revenue. The first is the sale of electricity to the Ontario Power Authority for a 20-year period through our feed-in tariff contract. So when I multiply out the 4.1 million kilowatt hours of electricity by the 17 cents per kilowatt hour that we get paid by the OPA, we will be receiving approximately $700,000 per year of revenue from that source. In addition to this, we also get paid for accepting and processing organic waste from our grocery store partner. In the first five years of the project, they are going to pay us $50 per ton for the 14,000 tons of organics that we're accepting in order to uh, create electricity and essentially neutralize the effect of that waste stream. And for doing this service for them, we will receive an additional $700,000 per year, and that is secured through a 10-year supply contract with a 10-year option to renew. I will make this point in one minute, but I would also just like to point it out now that those tipping fees are projected in our financial model as well as through industry forecasts to decline over time as the biogas industry grows and develops. And so in our financial model, we are projecting that we are going to get $20 a ton in the second five-year period, $10 a ton for the third five-year period, and $0 a ton for the last five years of our supply contract, which will also be the last five years of our feed-in tariff contract. Also supporting our project and our revenue streams is fertilizer sales. So the bagged material or the liquid material, we're projecting that we're going to sell it for $20 a ton and generate approximately $60,000 a year of additional revenue from selling what could be described as the waste from our process. In order to support this, this is what our financial projections look like over the 20 years of our feed-in tariff contract. And all of the cash flows and net income that we are projecting to earn end up giving the cooperative an approximate return on its investment of 12%. You can see on this chart when the community bonds mature, um, it's, uh, it's going to be a bit of a rolling maturity because it, the bonds mature seven years from the day that you purchase your bond. But most of the bonds will be maturing in between year six, seven, and eight. And um, where those tipping fee declines that I was just describing are reflected here in this chart are those dips that you see in each five-year period. So typically when a company will show you their profit and loss projections, it has a nice hockey stick shape, hockey stick shape where it starts off slow and then increases rapidly at a certain point. With ZooShare, we have more of a utility scale business model, utility style business model where it's slow and steady wins the race. And so because of those declines in tipping fees, our net income and cash flows will be declining in each five-year period if the industry does grow as we project it. It may not, so we may end up getting higher tipping fees than we project, but we want it to be conservative, and so that was why we presented it that way. And the reason that the chart has upward sloping uh, lines after each five-year period is because the price that we get for the electricity increases at half of the rate of inflation. So even though we're getting 17 cents per kilowatt hour in the first year, that rate will go up at approximately 1% per year.
The bonds, which I've mentioned a couple of times, here are the bond terms. And as I said, we've raised $1.4 million of our $2.2 million target. So we're well on our way to get there by April 1st of next year, which is what we're projecting uh, is when the round will close. The minimum investment in our bonds is $500, and it costs you an additional $10 lifetime membership fee to join the cooperative and get access to this investment opportunity. On the day that you buy your bond, or more specifically, the day that your bond is processed, which would be a couple of weeks after we receive your check and membership form, you will begin earning 7% interest per year for the next seven years. Before the project is operational, the interest that you earn will accrue to you as a payable that ZooShare owes you. And then once our plant is operational and generating revenues, we will pay out the outstanding and current interest to all of our investors. Um, so that'll happen once we're up and running, and then you'll start receiving interest payments once a year from that point forward. The great thing about ZooShare is the impact that you're making. It's not only the seven year, 7% interest rate, but it's also that you're making 20 to 30 years of impact on our local environment. Every year after your bond is repaid, we will continue receiving 14,000 tons of organic waste, which will not need to go to a landfill, which will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by over 10,000 tons per year and generate approximately 4 million kilowatt hours of electricity each year. So if you want to sleep well at night, this is the kind of investment you want to make because you are going to continuously making a positive impact on our environment long after you've already received your principal back, which is a great thing given cur the current environment where oil prices are very variable and fluctuating and causing serious declines in our Toronto Stock Exchange. So if you don't want to deal with that roller coaster ride, a nice fixed 7% return is a good way to go in my opinion. So thank you very much for joining us today and taking time out of your day to learn more about ZooShare. I'd be very pleased to answer any of your questions now. So as a reminder, I'm going to unmute everybody's lines and you could use the chat box to the left uh, to type in your questions and I'll answer them one at a time. So I see to the left now, we already have, um, one question coming from one of our... Um, All attendees are unmuted. So everybody's unmuted now. So just uh, watch the noise in your area because everybody else can hear you. Um, so the first question we have is from Dohu. Uh, if I buy my share today, when will I start to receive my interest? Thank you very much. That's a great question. Uh, and as I mentioned, um, you will begin receiving interest as soon as your bond is processed. Uh, the next question that we have is from Diana. What is the likelihood of getting, uh, not getting the required permit to build the plant? That is also a very good question, Diana. Thank you. Um, the, the likelihood of not getting the permit is actually very low. Um, the process with the Ministry of the Environment works like this. You put in your application, you fill out, um, uh, not fill out, you complete a number of technical reports, which can currently be found on the ZooShare website, and you explain to the Ministry of Environment essentially everything that you're planning on doing and all of the environmental impact it could have on the surrounding environment. And the way that the approval process works is that they take six months, which actually began on November 25th, to review all of those reports and ask you all of the necessary questions they have to reflecting their concerns and where they're not clear. And uh, essentially they issue the approval at the point that they're satisfied with the information that you're providing to them. And so the reason that I say that the likelihood is low that we don't get this is that the back and forth can continue for as long as we're willing to keep going forward with it. And so if they have continuously more and more questions and more and more concerns, we will keep working to answer those questions until they eventually say, okay, I'm comfortable with what you're planning on doing. You can go ahead with the construction and operation of this facility. And we are currently projecting that we're going to receive that approval from the ministry on May 25th of next year but I want to make clear that I have no control over the amount of time that they take in order to hum, um, to think this over and uh, ask us more questions, uh, but we will always be answering their questions in a timely and constructive manner, so doing everything we can to meet their timelines of a six-month review and approval. 
Are there any additional questions? Again, you could use the chat box or feel free to just speak up. I see that some of your lines are, are muted on your end. Um, so you can unmute yourself using um, the any meeting um, tools. Um, so I think you just need to click on the microphone to unmute yourself. Um, oh, we're seeing another question again. Uh, oh, it's from uh, Rumald Dohu. Sorry, I did not get your answer. Headphones off. No problem, Ramon. So uh, about your interest, you'll start learning the interest as soon as you're investing this process, and it's going to accrue to you during the time that we're not operational. And then when we are operational, you'll receive those payments once a year um, on January 1st. There might be something going on. Uh, awesome is the answer. No problem, Diana. So in essence, um, the likelihood of not getting the environmental permit is low, um, but um, it's, it's really dependent upon a back and forth together uh, with the Ministry of the Environment where they review all of the technical reports that we submitted to them that are currently posted on our website. And at the point that they have had all of their questions answered by us and they feel comfortable, they issue the permit. And so it's really an ongoing back and forth for as long as we're willing to keep going with that process. And given that we're extremely committed to building our biogas plant, we will go and answer as many questions as they have for as long as they have questions. But they have committed to a six-month turnaround time for that permit. So we're projecting that we're going to receive it on May 25th of 2015. Uh, we have another question from Romold. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name properly, by the way. Uh, if you buy a $1,000 bond, how much interest will you earn each year? Uh, you will earn $70 of interest. It is a 7% return on investment uh, that is calculated and paid annually. So um, I just wanted to say uh, you're very welcome to the two question uh, askers there. Um, if you do have any additional questions after the info session ends today, please do not hesitate to contact me. My email address is daniel at and it's there on the slide. Uh, I'm going to follow up today's presentation with a copy of the PowerPoint slides, so feel free to peruse those at your own convenience. And, uh, Feel free to contact me if when you have any questions. Uh, we would very much love for all of you to become investors and members of ZooShare and have you playing a part in the growth of Ontario's community-owned biogas sector. So again, thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to learn more about ZooShare and consider this investment opportunity. So with that, I will say goodbye. Thank you again and enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.